Hey, what up, guys? It's your boy Sector, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, uh, yeah, your boy is back. Uh, I know it's been a while, um, it's almost like a month now since I uploaded any video, but uh, I want to thank you guys for your patience. Um, those of you who are still watching my videos, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. But uh, anyway, yeah, like I said in my other video, I was moving into a different place, and uh, it took a while because I had to get all my stuff together. Uh, I had to set up my computer on my desk, so now uh, now I can actually start recording. But yeah, anyway, uh, today I'm going to be reacting to, uh, I've never done this on my channel before. This is a daily show with Trevor Noah. I really like Trevor Noah. Um, I like his, uh, his, you know, his humor that he has with his daily show, his talk show. But uh, most importantly, he's going to be talking about SaaS, which... Uh, if a lot of you are probably familiar, if you're looking at social media, you know what's happening in Nigeria. And uh, if you guys can already tell, I'm African. I'm not from Nigeria though, but I'm from Ghana. And I have close friends that are from Nigeria and, and I really wanna talk about this stuff. I know um, we're living in a bad time right now. 2020 hasn't really been the best uh, so far. Um, it's, it's a lot of crazy stuff happening and people are, People are, you know, speaking up, you know, to uh, all this bad stuff that is happening, the police brutality and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, I'm going to watch the video and then after that, I'm going to talk about it. For those of you guys who don't know what's going on, I might share my opinion or uh, what I think about, you know, everything that's happening. So this is a uh, daily show with Trevor Noah. Let's check it out, shall we? Let's talk about Nigeria. If Africa was a country, then Nigeria would be Texas. Everything is bigger, there's a ton of oil, and the people love telling you that they come from there. Well, I don't know if you know this, That's but true. I'm originally from Texas. That's very true. I, I ever <laughs> told you that I am from Nigeria, the Lone Star State. Woohoo! Nigeria is the best country in the world. And most importantly, praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. I was going to say the same thing, huh? <laughs> praise the Lord. So, right now, the West African powerhouse of 200 million people is dealing with a series of protests that might seem a little familiar to people living in the U.S. Nigerians have taken to the street for what is now a second week of nationwide protests against police brutality. Protests across the country started after a video circulated last week. It, it reportedly showed members of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, or SARS, fatally shooting a man and then driving off in his car. This protest is being largely driven by young people. They say that they bear the brunt of the brutality of this specialist police unit. The hashtag end SARS trended worldwide on social media for days, with celebrities across the world of sport and entertainment getting in on the act. Celebrities like Kanye West have joined in the recent protests, calling for an end to SARS. Stop killing our boyfriends, stop killing our children. End SARS now, today, not tomorrow, end SARS now. That's right, people. Nigerians in Nigeria and all over the world have taken to the streets to call for an end to police brutality in their country. And if you know anything about Nigeria, the fact that these people are all on the same page makes this even more incredible. Normally, the only time Nigerians get this united is when their team is playing in the World Cup or when they're shitting on a neighboring country's food. For the other day, I was eating sand from the desert. <laughs> then when I looked down, I realized it was not sand. It was Jollof from Ghana. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. I'm so funny because it's dry. It don't taste as good as ours, huh? Oh, my God. But even God. though this is a global... That's country, very true. That includes everyone Nigerians from the like talking Nigeria about the yeah, Jollof. Superstars like Ooh. Kanye West. There are many people out there who might say, well, what is SARS? And why do we need to hashtag end it? Well, let's find out why. In another installment of If You Don't Know, Now You Know. Man, YouTube is getting super comfortable with this ads, man. As Nigerians struggled with high crime rates in the 90s, the government decided that the best solution would be to create a special police unit who could do whatever they wanted to stop crime. But as you might expect, 
things didn't go as planned. It's a unit that was set up in the 90s. Uh, the initial purpose of it was to deal with armed robberies, cattle rustling, um, and other violent thefts. They were given a special remit, initially not needing to wear uniforms, acting as a sort of baseless security force. Over time, essentially, they used their autonomy to be able to move around very freely, set up roadblocks, but they were definitely became the kind of more brutal face of the police, eventually being accused of extrajudicial killings, torture, corruption, and robbery. Many Nigerians essentially see SARS as a replica of the very criminal groups they were set up to address. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that's a plot twist I did not see coming. The good guys who were supposed to stop the bad guys eventually became worse than the bad guys? I mean, I suppose that is one way to end crime. You just take over the crime for yourself. That would be like if you got a dog to protect your house, but then woke up in the middle of the night and the dog's got a gun pointed at your face like, <laughs> be a good boy and nobody gets hurt. <laughs> and I know what some of you might be saying right now. <laughs> well, if these Nigerians would just obey the law, then they wouldn't have to worry about the SARS police. Well, unfortunately, obeying the law doesn't help when just existing is considered a crime. There has been a policing culture that targets uh, young Nigerian youths that are perhaps seen in flashy cars, and these are seen as uh, internet uh, fraudsters. Because they see, you know, young people looking good or young people dressing a type of way, they just automatically feel this guy is a criminal. You are profiled if you have dreads, if you have tattoos, if you're wearing tight clothes, if you have an iPhone. I've been in two times in just one year, two times because of my iPhone. And that is the first question they ask you, where is your phone? I'm a woman. I come back at night. Police will be telling me that where do I get money to buy my vehicle? They'll call me prostitute. We cannot do that. I work too hard for my money, man. How can you see somebody on the road and you pick them up and they are criminals just by looking at them? Maybe I look fresh, all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm stealing. Yes. SARS would arrest yeah. people for simply dressing well or having an iPhone. And to have the police arresting people for their clothing choices must be so confusing. Because on the one hand, it is horrible to be harassed by the police for how you look. On the other hand, it's also kind of a compliment. And if they don't arrest you, then you'll be like, wait, hold on, what's, what's wrong with my outfit? What's wrong with my outfit? <laughs> but the most surprising <laughs> aspect of this for me is that people are getting profiled as criminals just for having an iPhone, which is insane. Criminals don't use iPhones, they use Exactly. Phones. Everybody knows this. If you need a phone that you might have to toss down a sewer while the cops are after you, you don't You wouldn't get an IT. iPhone. But this just goes to show that this <laughs> issue isn't unique nah. in the US. Whether it's American police targeting black Americans or Nigerian police targeting other Nigerians, police in many countries around the world know that they can abuse their power without ramifications because the people they harass don't have the power to respond. Right. But after years of police brutality, Nigerians have responded. They've taken to the streets over the last few weeks to say that enough is enough. Unfortunately, the police response to these peaceful protests has been all too familiar. We are seeing acts of police brutality on protesters uh, um, demonstrating peacefully. Protesters dispersed by officers with water cannons, tear gas. Yeah. They were shooting, they were shooting them too. Oh my God. Really, YouTube? Dollar. <sighs> Live ammunition was used to disperse protesters against police brutality. What is exactly what happened in the U.S.? Law and order. Exactly what happened. Law and order, whatever we are doing. You know, it's amazing how around the world, law and order seems to be code for let's beat the shit out of these protesters. Because just like we've seen in the U.S., the police in Nigeria responded to protests about police brutality with more police brutality. Brut brutality and this yeah. is the kind of behavior that you only see with police. No other industry has this. Imagine complaining to your waiter that there's something wrong with your food and he responds by spitting in it right in front of you. I mean, I'm still gonna eat it because what kind of monster wastes Benny Hanna, but best believe I'm not holding back in my Yelp review. Three stars max. Now the good news is the protest- Zero stars. And all the pressure paid off. In fact, the Nigerian government announced that they would cancel the SARS unit with immediate 
effects. The bad news is they already have a spin-off in the works. The Nigerian Inspector General and the entire world have heard those chants of NSARS and now the country is dissolving its controversial special anti-robbery squad known as SARS. A rebranded Nigerian police unit called Special Weapons and Tactics or SWAT has been organized and includes members of that disbanded group. The campaigners here are calling the decision to abolish uh, SARS a hollow victory. And they say that they will continue protesting. They're out on the streets this morning. They say these are just words and they are demanding action. This is, after all, the fourth time that this very same unit has been disbanded and nothing has changed. We do not want them to say they are banned. They were banned 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. So now we are saying end to SARS. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. How are you going to disband the corrupt units, but then rehire the same officers under a different name? That makes absolutely no sense. That would be like if someone had a nightmare child who was like burned their furniture. And then instead of actually dealing with the problem, the parent was like, okay, I've had it, Jaden. Enough of this. From now on, your name is Brian. All right, here's some matches. Have a good time. I think we solved that. So despite the government cracking down, protesters have remained in the streets and are now demanding wholesale reforms in all parts of Nigerian life. And as we saw just today, the police crackdown is only becoming more violent. But what started as a police protest has now turned into a call for a social revolution. Nigerians now want more jobs, better schools, better infrastructure, and an end to all corruption, which is what hashtag NSARS has now become. And if you don't know, now you know. Wow. Okay, so... Yeah, Trevor pretty much covered it at this point. Um, like I said in the beginning, um, I'm from Ghana, so we kind of like in the same area. I wouldn't say same area, but like, so far as like Africa, we're kind of like the same country, like neighbors and stuff. So what he's saying and what the Nigerian people are going through, I kind of get it, but at the same time, it's kind of, um, uh, it's kind of news to me too as well, because, uh, I'm not really into politics, like, so far as, like, uh, getting into the government system and all that kind of stuff. Like, granted, I grew up in Ghana, but, like, we saw corruption and bribery in a whole bunch of different ways, you know? Uh, we knew the police were kind of shady. They were doing some things behind the, you know, behind the public's eye. They had, like he said, they hired some uh, special tax forces to, uh, to deal with crimes and stuff like that. But, uh... As I said before, Nigeria is a huge country. Nigeria is like the biggest country in Africa, and they have a lot of people. So for this to happen, it kind of impacts other countries too that are around them. You know what I'm saying? And like they said, this is probably not the first time this has probably happened. You know, it's getting worse. That's why they're speaking up right now. But this, is, this has been happening for a long time. Like they banned this corrupt police people like four years ago. They keep banning them and they keep bringing out new people and just, you know, putting tags and names on them to make it seem like they're a different type of unit to protect, different type of unit force to protect the, the country. But uh, but it's not it's not the same. You know, the whole thing comes from the government. That's all it is. The government is too corrupt to do anything to help these people, you know. And it's, it's bad enough that we have to walk around and be racial, uh, be profiled, you know, for just being a human being. It's, it's bad enough that we had to deal with this stuff in the U.S. with George Floyd and all this protests and, and, the, and the police brutality and all that kind of stuff. Now it's happening in Nigeria, and it's even worse at this point because I think it was this yesterday, there was, a, there was a shooting at a toll in Nigeria where peaceful protests were gunned down, like, for no reason, just for protesting. Like, it's, 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 it's bad right now. There's videos out there of people just walking down the street and these are not these are not cops these are like special unit like they're like dressed like just like random people you know and just shooting civilians like it's 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 crazy so i mean 
we're speaking up and i know a lot of people are pretty sh like um pretty tired of seeing this stuff happen like celebrities and stuff um but it all comes from the government you know that's that's the only thing i can say about this if if they can hold the government accountable for all this stuff that's happening then they can eventually put an end to this kind of stuff you know but uh but it all starts from just you know us speaking up you know protesting you know using our voices to to defend ourselves because this stuff is not going to end you know it's it's not and every single day we pray that you know this stuff doesn't get worse and worse every day you know i have friends from nigeria and their families are back in nigeria and it's it's terrifying because you know every day you don't know what's going to happen you know you might wake up and somebody close to you probably got injured or is in the hospital somewhere because of this bad police brutality and this bad government system so i'm praying for all my nigerian friends um i'm praying for the people back in nigeria please take care of yourself stay safe you know and uh eventually we're gonna get through this you know so take care it's been your boy sector thank you guys for watching this video um i'm back i'm gonna be doing a lot of reaction videos but I just wanted to speak my mind on this uh, issue, which is uh, is very, very sad and uh, disappointing. But uh, but yeah. Anyway, until next time, I'll see you guys in a bit. Take care, and bye bye.